Welcome back to Mastara and get ready to tear down one of the core settings of our beloved world. Specifically, you've selected why the Hollow World is going to fail. There were hints about this throughout the Hollow World box set, but also in the official Almanac timelines. The idea for the Hollow World was an optimistic one. The immortal Ka, the Preserver, wanted to set up effectively a zoo to save dying civilizations, but by preserving them at the brink of their failure, left far too many of them trapped in a cycle of decline. I'm Mr. Welch, and it's time to talk about why the Hollow World is going to fail. To start, not all the cultures in the Hollow World are failing at the same rate. Some of them are spiraling out of control, others are more stable in their element. The one thing you have to look at is the effects of the spell of preservation. The spell, among other things, prevents society from being changed by outside influences. They will refuse to use methods from other societies because the spell has them locked into a specific mentality that refuses any progress, even if it's superior to their own if it wasn't created by one of their own. So if you head down to the Millennium Empire and set up a foundry cranking out steel weapons and armor, they will refuse to use them despite the fact that fe steel is far superior as for weapons than bronze is. However, if one of their own, through his own actions, discovers the trick into making steel and teaches apprentices how to do it, and convinces the provincial governor the superiority of steel, and the governor shows this to the emperor, that's allowed. The progress has to be purely internal, so a lot of cultures are just one Leonardo da Vinci away from rapid technological advancement. One of the biggest problems in the Hollow World is every single civilization was dying before it was preserved by the Immortals, but almost all of them were at the nadir of their civilization, meaning there's going to be a lot of problems still inherent with many of the cultures. The Gentle Ones are a race of elves that are so pacifistic they have no self-preservation instinct. The Black Lore Elves are in a state of constant malaise because all of their needs are met by robots. They have no need to try to progress. The Nithian Empire was built on a culture that is notorious for treachery. In fact, the Immortals have had to restart the Nithian civilization twice because the first attempt was ruined by civil war, and in the official timeline, another civil war is looming. The nations are all xenophobic or isolationist by design. The Immortals don't want outside influence to change the cultures that were saved, but this has caused widespread stagnation across the entirety of the Hollow World. Nations where the common people are little more than slaves, like the Nithians or the Asgans, will never rise up to throw down their oppressors. Worse, smaller states that live on the edges of the larger and militant empires will never band together to push back the invaders because they don't trust the neighbors that share the same goals they do. The Immortals will not let the cultures die, as evidenced in the Hollow World modules, where if the party is attacked by a band of ogres that were preserved and start wiping out the ogres, the Immortals teleport and resurrect the slain ogres to another part of the Hollow World to restart the civilization. A culture that is so inherently flawed to be unsustainable is cursed to fail and be reborn countless times as the Immortals refuse to let them fail. Only the constant interference in the cultures of the hollow world of the immortals are even keeping it sustainable. But this interference every time a culture fails violates one of the core restrictions the, the immortals have placed on themselves. It's partially waived because the hollow world is considered just a curious experiment by other immortals. But remember, Azantiotl is trying to get his ass cans to the surface to conquer it, so it has widespread implications in other parts of Nastara. The constant cycle of failure and restart isn't a bug in the game. It's meant to be a problem for characters to realize, and if the PCs or immortals try to convince Ka and his allies that he's doing more harm than good in his experiment. The Hollow World is a flawed concept that's going to collapse in on itself, just like Alphacia's reliance on self-absorbed wizards or the disjointed government of Solderford. It's meant to fail. It's how the parties handle the eventual collapse is what will shape the Hollow World. It could be allowed to naturally progress by the Immortals if convinced of a better way, or it could break out in a horrific three-way war between the Imperial powers that ravage all their weaker neighbors. The gorilla in the room that appears in the Wrath timeline is Alphacia's relocation to the Hollow World. That means Alphacia is going to be the most powerful nation in all of the Hollow World in an instant, placing them in a world where the technological level of the next most powerful natures are thousands of years behind them. According to the rules, anybody who is name level or higher is immune to the memory erasing magic of the spell of preservation. And Alphacia is ruled by a council of hundreds of high level wizards. There's nothing stopping Alphacia from conquering the entire ho Hollow World except for constant immortal intervention undoing their activities. They possess unknown powerful magics, flying machines, steel weapons, armor, and are immune to retaliation from the weaker nations they would be invading because they're on a floating continent. Considering they have access to flying ships and a lot of different forms of magic, their isolation is a minor nuisance to them. A lot of the weaker nations would immediately make themselves vassals of the Alphacians because it's obvious that the superiority of the high-powered wizards makes them the obvious victors considering their chief rivals are based on the ancient Greeks, ancient Egyptians, and the Aztecs. 
The biggest catalyst for change in the Hollow World is Other Immortals. The Hollow World is the sandbox for Ka and his allies, but Other Immortals can try to convince them that they're going about this the wrong way. Instead of inflicting cultural stagnation on the trapped cultures, let them progress faster than they are now, or for the ones that are truly locked into a terrible situation like the Gentle Ones or the Black Lore Elves, the Immortals might have to manifest as a member of the race that tries to lead that race onto a better path for their culture to advance. The odds of taking the Hollow World's care away from Ka is pretty slim. This is his baby, and even if what he's done is basically scooping up ants from different mounds and pouring them together, it's a double-edged sword. If you isolate the cultures to avoid outside interference like they did with the Black Lore Elves, then the culture stagnates even further because they have no reason to further their own development. But if you place a culture in the middle of a bunch of other foreign cultures, and one of them happens to be militaristic, then you end up with something like the Merry Pirates, who are constantly at war with all their neighbors. If the Millennium Empire finally gets tired of the Merry Pirates and sends its much more numerous army over to burn the pirate cities to ashes, then the Immortals have to start over. The Hollow World in game wasn't a well thought out idea. Ka hates change. He didn't want to see the fall of the numerous cultures either by disease, conquest, or even by their own mistakes. But in doing so, he also condemned them from ever improving their own lot. He preserved the bad aspects of the cultures as well, so the slaves found in all three of the largest empires will never be freed. The Merry Pirates will never know peace. There is no chance for improvement, no hope for emancipation. Better methods for agricultural and medicine will be ignored. The only option is eternal stagnation until somehow the spell of preservation is lifted. The Lighthouse has the right idea to preserve the history of the cultures, but let the cultures evolve. But they're far too uh, few in number to implement this on a scale necessary to make the change. So maybe the characters can help. Once again, the latest addition to the poll was the one that got voted on, and the information on the Thanago with Archipelago wasn't deemed exciting enough, so that goes back into the queue for later. So joining the options of the History of Thyatis, implementing the Red Curse in 5th edition, and the future conflicts of Mastara will be the Pirates of Mastara and the mysterious denial powers of the Hen. So until next time, remember, order without change is stagnation.